stuff. Okay. So here's the air duct assembly. The door switch is located behind this panel here. It's a little bit harder to get to, but it's located in inside here. And I'm trying to figure out where, where it is on this machine here. Hold on. It's up in here. You have to get this panel out to get to the heater. I mean to the door switch. Now these, these plugs here, one of the plugs is for the door switch, and then the other plug is for the the dryness sensor. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay? Some of them have a light inside here too. There'd be a lamp up here and it would light inside when you open the door so you can see the plug. So let's move on down some. The dryness sensor. Now that's what I want to get to right now. The dryness sensor on some machines is located right here on the filter housing. It's these two metal bands. Okay, um, went to Mealy training last week and they actually had the dryness sensor, two bands which were in the drum. Some machines have them all the way in the back of the drum area or the bulkhead area, it depends on the manufacturer. But what does a dryness sensor do and how does it work? What does it do? It's a dryness sensor, so it's sensing what? It's dry. It's sensing the dryness of the clothes. Yeah. In other words, the we got a rag here, and I wet it up a little bit. And, you know, they said a lightning storm don't ever stand in what? A puddle. Or don't go swimming in a lightning storm because water can conduct electricity. Yeah. Well... In, in reading this, if you read it, they said that there's a little capacitor on the board that stores about 5 volts of electricity. And when this wet cloth hits up against those two sensors, it conducts electricity between those two sensors. Usually one wire is connected directly to ground, so it discharges the capacitor to about 1 volt. And whenever it discharges the capacitor, the board sees that, and that means the clothes are wet, and so it extends the time it takes to dry. Hmm. So it's telling the dryer, hey, these clothes are super wet, keep running. Every time it hits, it discharges and the board sees that, oh, hold on, we're not, we're not done yet, keep running. As the clothes start to dry, the drier it gets, the higher the resistance, it doesn't discharge anymore. Now, you can take a, a meter, digital analog, I don't know if you guys can see it, uh, Darnell, you want to, Darnell, can you give me a second? Um, <coughs> ohms, so we're going to go on the highest ohm scale here, 20 mega ohms. And if we just touch the wet rag with both points, you can see he's getting a reading on the meter. And if we took a dry cloth, let's just say like my shirt, and I touch my shirt, what kind of resistance am I getting? I'm not getting any reading at all. So the board would see that moisture. Whenever time the wetness touched these two bands, mm -hmm. it would know how wet the clothes are, and it will extend the dryness time accordingly. Give me some problems that could happen with this dryness sensor. Not drying. It doesn't work correctly, so it, the machine just keeps running forever because it doesn't know the clothes. Okay. But actually, the machine won't work correctly if it's not sensing no, the work. wetness of the clothes. No, yes, so um, When you, the dryer is done, it would still have wet clothes in the dryer because it's not sensing. The okay, but what problems could I have with the sensor itself, not with the machine? Taking too long to dry? No, 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 actually, it would shut off sure. before the clothes dry, but what would cause it not to sense. It's just two pieces of metal. If you took them out, you'd just see a little aluminum strip or, or a little stainless steel strip of metal that that's get touched by the wet clothes. It's, it's a, not a control board itself. The, the, the thermostat would go in bad? No. no. First of all, people like to use those like bounce fabric sheets because it makes the clothes smell yeah, good and it's supposed good. to put a little softening mm -hmm. moisture. Mm -hmm. It's oily. And if they hit up against these bands too much, they leave a residue on the bands, the bands don't sense the moisture. I had a KitchenAid dryer, the guy turned it on, 
You put on time dry and run all day, put an automatic dry and run for about five minutes and shut off. Even if I had those soaking wet clothes in there. I put a rag right up against it, taped it to it. I said, okay, let's see it do it now. It's still shut up five minutes. Then we just took like a Mr. Clean scrub pad or something, cleaned it off, got a little bit of rubbing alcohol and took alcohol and cleaned it. We're good. Give me another example of a problem that could cause this thing not to work properly. Where's it located? In the front of the machine. Chris, you're an installer. If it's located in the front, what kind of problem do I have that's not installed properly? What if the front of the machine was set too high? Oh, tilt it? It was tilted back. We have a slightly for the machine. The machine covers everything together. Just spin it. Right. Yeah, but someone, so someone you installed it wrong. As a matter of fact, when I called some of the technical support lines and told them about it, they said, raise the back feet up just a little bit so that when it tumbles, the clothes hit the dryness sensor. Yeah. Or raise the front up because the dryness sensor is in the back, so the clothes hit it. In that case, you can, you can go to the uh, big university, YouTube. <laughs> YouTube University. YouTube. <laughs> All right, so the dryness sensor there is just to tell the machine, hey, you know, the clothes are almost dry and we can shut off. You know, one thing, we got the dryness sensor, we have time dry, this is more like what we call automatic dry. That time that the machine runs, if I have some towels in there and I put it on time dry, or I put it on automatic dry, which one would run longer? Automatic. Automatic, it depends. Time it automatic. depends on what? If, you, if it's working properly, like drying the clothes properly or yeah. Yeah. automatic dry would dry. Well, here, let's, let's, let's re rephrase the question. Be... If, if, if I have one beach towel okay. and I put it in the dryer time dry, Forget about how much time I turn. I turn to 60 minutes, I turn to 40 minutes. Let's just say it's 35 minutes. That towel will dry. No matter how many times I wash it, 35 minutes it'll dry. So if I'm on automatic or I'm time dry, they both turn the drum at the same speed. They both dry at the same temperature. What advantage do I have using one cycle over the other? Yeah. It's not going to dry my towel any now faster. The, the, the automatic is, uh, if it dry like 20 minutes before, it, it will stop. But if the time dry, it will work until the, the, the time requested to, to stop. 60. Yeah, so if I set the timer to 60 minutes and the clothes dry in 30, I'm wasting electricity, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then automatic dry is better, right? Because it will stop the dryer automatic. Yeah. when the yeah. clothes are dry yeah. or yeah. close to it. Is there disadvantages to automatic drying? Yes. And what? Give me an example. If it's, uh, if it's not, if it's uh, not dry, it will stop. If it's not dry, oh, no, it will stop. Oh, no, no, it will stop. I said, is there a disadvantage to automatic dry over time dry? No, no. In other words, yeah. is automatic better, or does it have its problems too? Man, it's, it's better. Better. But it's better. It's better. It's better. It's better. Because it's as soon as as soon as it's dry, then I will stop. Okay. Well, what, what, what 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 is the what is your what is the problem you think it will have? Um, the clothes could still be wet versus time dry, where you have, have a set time and let the clothes run. Like, like the, no, no time. Well, let me ask a question. Go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to the towel that I was talking about. Thirty-five minutes to dry a towel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You think it's going to take 35 minutes to dry this shirt? No. no. Yeah, nah. Okay, but they're still going to dry. What if, whatever time it takes to dry this shirt or whatever time it takes to dry the towel, it's going to take the time. Yeah. But when the clothes are tumbling, what if my shirt keeps hitting the sensor but the towel never touches it? What's the dryer going to think? Yeah, everything is dry. dry. And, the clothes, dry. and the towel is going to be wet. Right. Or if the towel keeps hitting it and the shirt is back... I could over dry, and if this is a cotton shirt, I'm gonna come back like this, like it's, it's, it's all shrunk because I overheated 
and ran this this cotton for too long. Yeah. So there are some advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people may call you out and say, hey, I'm using my dryer, but my clothes are still wet at the end of the cycle. Even though it senses the moisture in the clothes, it doesn't sense when, the, when it's close to dry, it doesn't conduct electricity, even though it might have some moisture on it. So if you have heavy stuff like towels and jeans mixed with t-shirts, that the t-shirts will dry sooner, you still have some items that might be wet inside the cycle. And it's not that there's anything wrong, the customer has a mixed load of clothing in there. So some will dry faster and depends on what hits the dryness sensor. So you need to know that because the customer may call you out and say, hey, my dryer's not drying. And you check the temperature at 160 degrees, the drum's turning, there's no holes in the back, the airflow is beautiful, but yet clothes are still coming out wet. Hmm. And it may be what the customer's drying. So sometimes, before I even go to the customer's house, I say, man, yeah, I see your clothes are not drying properly. Could you have a load of clothes that you would normally put in the machine uh, ready for me? I'll put it in the washer, just get it soaking wet, spin it out and throw it in the dryer, and, and, and I'll see if this dryness sensor is not drying properly, but I'm also going to look at what type of load the customer's putting in the machine because it might just be a customer inst instruction more than something wrong with the machine. Mm -hmm. You have to know how the sensor works so you can explain it to the customer. Ma'am, it's because you got a t-shirt and a towel, and if the t-shirt keeps hitting, the towel doesn't, it doesn't know what the towel is doing. Because a lot of people say, it's got a dryness sensor in there. They think it senses everything. It only senses what it touches. What do know? Okay. The que question I will ask is, the heating element stays on for the whole ser uh, a cycle or a certain time stop for the winkle? The heating element cycles on and off until usually the last five or ten minutes of the cycle so it reduces wrinkle at the end of the cycle. Okay? Almost all dryers have that. Even back before they even did digital dryers, mechanical timers and everything all did that as well. Here you can see where it says, you know, when it discharges the capacitor, the capacitor charges with 5 volts DC, and then when the circuit is open, uh, it discharges uh, less than 1 volt DC. So in other words, when a wet clothes hit it, it has 5 volts on the cap, it drops to 1 volt, and then it has to build that charge back up again. And every time the wet clothes hit it, it discharges. So the board is watching that capacitor's voltage value in okay. order to know whether it's wet or dry. So capacitor on the board or the... Yeah, built into the control oh, board. Okay. There's, a, there's a capacitor on here. Let me see if I can see it. Well, we got a couple of capacitors on here, so I don't know which one it is, but some little round things. Okay. Um, let me see if they identify it on this board here. This is a capacitor, this is a capacitor. Some of the smaller ones are, are resistors, but there may be a capacitor there too. I don't know which one of those capacitors, and if there's something wrong with that, you gotta change the whole board. We don't take and unsolder this capacitor and put another one on. Okay? Uh, this is, uh, nothing important here. This is the service mode. We're not gonna go through that today. Uh, let's take a look at the schematic and wiring diagram now. Anybody got your diagrams? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm trying to get my the, the most of the diagram to appear at one time. All right. Heater relay one. Heater relay two, mm -hmm. motor relay. Okay. Those are all part of the control board. Uh, you can't replace them individually, but that's what that is. What are all these boxes with these arrows in them? You see, we got them out yeah. throughout the machine. Connector, connector. Those are quick disconnects. Quick, quick dis like these, these are considered quick disconnects on this panel here. Honest. And that's what those arrows are. It means that you can unplug the machine or unplug specific components from the machine. Honest with these quick disconnects here, okay? Um, let's first talk about, customer calls you out and says, my board is dead, it does not work at all. I press buttons, 
you go in, into the machine and you check power in the wall, could be something else wrong with it. But where would power come into this machine? Now, if you're going to tell me, I want specific location that you would make this test. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Let's come in on L1 and L2, Nocho and L1. I want to go to the, uh, the orange, the high so, but where, 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 where is that? Where, where physically is that? Uh, what about? If you, you see like the, the rear panel. What's it called? CN1, no. Internal block? The terminal block. The terminal block. Yeah. The terminal block, this is where the plug on the wall is connected. That's yeah. located down in here mm -hmm. in the back of the machine. I have to turn around. I'm not going to turn around. Mm -hmm. But that's where power comes in. Now you could test there. But you'd have to pull the machine out of the closet. If we get the top off, we can get to the control board here. Where would I test it on the control board? CN11. CN11. And that's good. CN11 identifies the connector yeah. on the board. On this, on this main board here, we have several different plugs and connectors. And right here on this one plug, this one plug is this one here. Yeah. And it's identified on top of the board. You can't really see it, but it'll say CN. I don't know if that's 11 or 111. Yeah. Um, but this is the power CN coming into the machine. We got orange, white, and blue. No, black. Yeah. Orange, black. white, and black. Orange, yeah. white, and black. Okay? Yeah. Those are the ones yeah. that are bringing power in. If my control board does not work at all, I'm going to check... Black to white, white, orange to white, and black to orange. If I get 120, 120, 240, at that point, my board don't work, what do I do? Replace the board. Replace the board. That's it. I'm going to go right here to these three wires right here. Check to make sure I have the proper voltage. That's these three wires right here. Can I unplug it? And if I do, where would I make my test? On the board? No, on no, the, no, no, no. On the wire. On, on the plug. Yeah, no. You would check the actual wires coming in because those are these three wires coming in. That's right. I'll give you an example. I can still remember this young man. He was working on a microwave. He says it's running and it's not heating. And he was just getting into microwaves. He knew enough to test components and everything. I said, do me a favor. Tell me if you got power to the high voltage transformer. I, I need to know whether it's on the control side or it's on the high voltage side of my problem, I need to know if you got 110 volts coming to the transformer. Can you test that for me? He says, yeah, yeah. Okay, tell me what you got. He comes back to me, he says, Richard, I don't have no voltage. I say, you got no voltage, you have a bad capacitor, dial, maybe magnetron, let me see. And I go over there and he's got his meter lead connected to the transformer, but the two wires, <laughs> he has them off. <laughs> I bring the power now. <laughs> Well, there's not ever going to be any power there if the wires are not connected. Why did he make that? Why did he make that mistake? He thought it was on resistance. He was thought he was doing an ohms test or resistance test because when we do a resistance test, we pull the wires off. We do voltage test. We don't disconnect wires. One, the wires don't want to carry the electricity to that part. So if you disconnect them, they'll never have it. And two, it's not safe to have loose wires just hanging in the air. That are carrying electricity. He's a funny guy. You get shot. You laugh, but I guarantee every one of you, when you first started doing something like this, whether it's here in class or you were working outside, you probably could have made the same mistake. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you don't know. So, you know, be careful. All right. What if I checked CN11 from 1 to 2, I get 120. From 2 to 3, I get 0. And 1 to 3, I get 0. What if I get those three readings? Line two. 120 from yeah, 1 to 2? Okay. The, the, the neutral okay. for, for the line 1, it gives you 120. Well, if I'm checking from 1 to 2, that's not line 1. No. Line two. Is it? Line two. It's line 2 because this number 1 comes down here. What is that? Line 2. It's line 2. 
Uh-huh. Not line, line one. Line one's bad. Line one's bad, huh? So Telecast McCall Electrician? Yeah. Yes. Mm, yeah. How many Telecast McCall Electrician? <laughs> let's say let's say you go to the outlet in the wall and you test line one, line two, neutral, and the voltage is good. But you come to the board here, and you only got 120 here. You don't have voltage here. You don't have this. Oh, back, back cord. Yeah. The wire. Change the wire. I the wire. High limit. What am I pointing at? High limit thermostat. High limit thermostat. That comes from line one before the board. If that thermostat's bad, I can have good voltage here and have good voltage there, right? Yeah, I didn't see it. Y'all, y'all didn't see it. I didn't see it. Now you you wait for me to point it out to you. Yeah, I do. Okay, so you need you need oh, to know that. Hold the attention. Mario's got excuse. He don't have his glasses today. So yeah. <laughs> I can't see. I can't see. Okay. And I'm but, the cameraman. I'm following you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can watch the video. Later, yeah. so. Anyways, uh, that high limit thermostat would stop the board from working. The machine wouldn't work. So, you know. Most of the time you think thermostats are in series with the heating element because that's what thermostats do, they control heat. But in this case, this thermostat is controlling power in here. If for some reason a relay on the board is stuck, even, even if the power on the board is, like, the board is turned off, this is going to stop what? If this opens, what will it stop? The heating element. No. Yeah. It could stop the heat element. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to take that back. Yeah. But if we look at line one, not only does it control the board, the but it goes the motor. here stop the motor. and it comes down in and it goes here the motor stop. Mm -hmm. to the main motor. And if the motor don't run, the motor has what inside of it to control the heater? Yeah. What's inside the motor that controls the heater? The centrifugal switch? Centrifugal centrifugal switch. switch. What terminals on the switch control the heater? There you go. One and two. Numbers. One, two. One, and two. One and two. And if we look here, for example, here's our heater. M1 and M2, M mini motor, that's the centrifugal switch controlling that heater. So if I kill the motor, even if a relay on the board is stuck, the heater's still going to stop running because the centrifugal switch will stop it. See that? 1M and 2M very rarely fail, but you need to know that that's in the circuit because if you, you know, I know guys, you know, having my own company and have people work for me, I see it more often than anything. But I know guys, they go out to the customer's house, oh, your dryer's not working, I'm going to order a heating element, and they order a couple yeah. of thermostats, like this. and they go back and they just change it. No. It's not coming out of their pocket. It's not good either. They change the heater. They change the thermostats. Uh, Z, uh, charge running not heating. Okay, did you check this? Yeah, I checked this. Did you check that? Yeah, I checked this. I changed the thermostat and I changed the heater, and it's still not heating. How do you change it? Because they're not testing the components, or they're not checking the voltage. You can tell me you change it. Don't tell me you change. You test it. How do you change it? No, they don't tell me they change the parts ahead of time. They just tell me it's not working. No, I my find question out later. is, why you change the part if you don't test it? They don't test it. Because they don't know what they're doing. They say they're mechanics <laughs> or they're technicians. And, and, you know, you go to this machine a hundred times, and this this piece always fails. So you go to someone else's house, and it's yeah, the same it's problem. Ma'am, I need to get you that, ther that thermostat. And they go get thermostat, and they come back and change it. And it doesn't fix it this time. And they're like, I don't know what to do. You know, yeah. I, I've changed it a hundred times, it fixes the problem. Have you ever taken a meter out and made a few tests? You know, five or ten minutes of testing saves you a lot of time work. I tell you, one thing I hated as a technician was getting a parts call from some other technician. And over a period of time working for the company, you know which technicians you don't want to run parts calls on. Because I don't remember how many times I've gone to a customer's house and I start changing all these parts and it's still not working. So I realized, oh, I'm going behind Mike again. I'm going to check this whole machine out. I'm going to check. I, I've had customers tell me, um, you know, if, and they see me with a meter testing. They see me with five parts stacked on the ground. Wow. And, and they're like, well, why, why are you testing it? 
I said, ma'am, I just want to confirm that this is the problem because I'm not going to spend an hour and a half changing parts and find out it's still got the problem in it. I want to make sure I take care of it. Our customers get a little uneasy when that happens because they trust the first technician out. Mm -hmm. And whether they're working for your company or not, it, it doesn't matter. Don't badmouth these guys. You know, yeah. sometimes people badmouth another technician that works in their company. And, you know, sometimes to them, I'm a better technician. This guy, Joe, came out. He really doesn't know what he's doing. You know, but I'll take care of you. I promise to take care of you. You look bad, they look bad at the whole company. Yeah. You know, you can say, look, ma'am, everybody makes mistakes. I, I, I make mistakes. I've been yeah, doing this for 30, 40 years. Do I make mistakes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. see them as often as I used to, mm -hmm. but, you know, <laughs> everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> don't badmouth them because that customer might not ever call your company back. And if you got customers not calling your company back, you, a month later, you don't have no work because customers stop calling back for service. Yeah. Gotcha. So you got to take care of every customer and you got to watch what you say. Here's another another thing. I have this dryer and he don't know it. Oh, ma'am, I see this all the time. It's that thermostat. <laughs> now the customer thinks they bought a lemon. Yeah, I changed five of them today. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I bought a machine. That, this part's always breaking. <laughs> you act like it's the first time you've seen it, but you know how to check it. Don't. Oh, I... I got one of these in my pocket. I carry it with me everywhere I go because they're always breaking. Is that something you want to hear if someone goes to your car or your house and says, oh, that piece always fails. You got a piece of junk. You can't do that. You know, being a technician and being, being a smart person are two different things. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at some of these components on, the, on this, and we're going to go back over the machine. Um, oops. I'm going to take a screenshot of this and, and, and add it to my uh, board so we can draw on it. Give me one second here. Where's my little camera? It's right here. Can't see it over there. Let me take a screenshot real quick. There it is. And my Adobe back on this one. Now we can draw it. I know it's not perfect, but you guys get the idea, right? Yeah. All right, so let's talk about electricity, how it's flowing through the machine. Because in order to troubleshoot a machine that's working or not working, you need to know how electricity is flowing through it. So when we're troubleshooting, we'll check electricity. So let's. Um, let me move this out of the way. Let's take a look at the motor circuit first. Because when you first start up the machine, what's the first thing that runs? The motor. The motor, right? Mm -hmm. So power comes in line one. Does someone want to complete that circuit for the motor for me on the board? Nobody? Somebody. Somebody? Come on, Junior. So I got power into the board. Show me how power is going through the motor. That's a light bulb. No, I don't, I don't see it. Right. I see on my paper, but I... <laughs> okay. Okay. First of all, this says motor relay. <coughs> and if you look, that switch is mm -hmm. the switch inside the relay. This is not the switch in the relay, so you got to go up yeah. that wire. And so now you're in the middle one, so you're just going to go straight up and over here and down.
Now you're back in the light bulb again. Mm -hmm. That's not the motor. Yeah, I can do it in my paper, but you know. Okay. It's not nice good. try. You want to do it, darling? Let me see if I can. Yeah, let's see. Okay. It's... Are you going to try? Over here, over here, over here. Yeah, yeah. Come my hair goes over here, come my hair down. That's um, you see? But I can't see it. So it's like switch. Let me do it. No, no, okay, no. Yeah, it's, it's the picture. It's, let me let me do one thing here, maybe help you guys out, because you're all blind. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> three. Then go to the. How about I just do this, and then if we now go, I can now I. That's it. Go to the next page and paste it. Now you're gonna have to pull that switch, eh? Hold on. Now I made this circuit bigger. Yeah, the motor one. I give you one more try, darling. If not, you're fired. Yeah. Number three right here. What's this? I don't know. Yeah, right here. Let's go over here. Can I just tell you? No, you can't. Oh, okay. You can't do it. Telling me is not good. <laughs> I'm the one that's supposed to tell you, and you're the one supposed to do I it. Well, not sure. Let me try again. Let, let me do it. No, yes. do it. Okay. Do it. Do it. okay, power comes in line one, and it goes through the, the motor relay, right? Right. It goes up here, and then it, it jumps back down and goes this way into my motor. I, I do. That's what I did. But you didn't finish the circuit. Yeah, the circuit was finished. You only got power coming in. You got one wire is enough to make this no, motor no, work. No, no, no. You want to go to the other side? Say sorry. Let's go to the other side. I'm going over here. And then it goes here. Down. It closes. Where do I go here? You go, you go down. down. You go down and close on on the normally close. Go down and close on the normally and close. close. Don't go to the left. Then let's go straight. Uh, go straight. So what color wire? What color wire to the white? You have to go on the brown and yellow. No man. Well, there's a brown and yellow here and a brown number and yellow two. here. Right here. Oh, no, no, you're going, going up. You're going up. Well, well, not to number right two. Over here. We gotta go through the door switch. Correct. And then from here, where do I go? From the 